Hi and welcome back to the Dead Ball area. The Lions Test Series has thrown up some fantastic rugby, but for both the Lions and the All Blacks there's been a plethora of missed opportunities throughout the series. And some of that is down to defence and some of that is down to just not recognising the possibilities when they arise. The first 15 minutes of the third test was played at breakneck pace with both teams playing some superb attacking rugby. And in one attack the Lions put together 14 phases only to have a pass intercepted and end up back on their own line frantically trying to clear it. I think that sequence neatly summed up the series for both sides and we're going to break it down in a little more detail. It's a genuinely interesting sequence of rugby. It starts with the Lions executing an exit play with Murray Box kicking and Daly chasing. And this has been the Lions signature move. We see Daly getting in the air, arms above his head to get a great catch and steal the ball from Dag and the Lions immediately transition into attack mode. Off the very first phase we can see the Lions have potentially created an overlap and all they have to do is run straight and stop the All Blacks defence from drifting to hold the space for Watson. But they go laterally very quickly and Williams is shut down by Lamaffey who simply has to tread water and track Williams across the pitch. And Watson takes it into contact and as the Lions rewind we can see the All Blacks have got back and set up a solid defence. You can also see the transition zone though is badly spaced and I think there's an opportunity for O'Brien to tip the ball onto George and to then follow him into contact as the latch, making the All Blacks defend on their outer shoulders. And regardless it's good ball retention and the Lions run another phase, dragging the All Blacks defence with them, eventually creating another overlap. Again if the Lions simply draw and pass then they should be able to preserve space for daily. But Toje sees the All Black defence is not committed and are jockeying off to shut down that space. So he takes it into contact and they go again. The Lions again revert to their same side pattern and run two phases back across the pitch. Again, the aim is to drag the All Blacks defence with them and moving the main defensive unit across the pitch. Again, we see if O'Brien plays in behind the pod, there's the potential to create an overlap using the second wave of attackers. But he instead opts to take the contact. And that's okay. Even if it's the wrong decision, the team now have to make it a good one and they secure the ball and get ready to go again. The Lions reload where they came from and again we can see there's the potential to create an overlap using the second wave of attackers with Daly and Dag both out of shot in the 5 metre channel where there's a lot of space to work in. Sexton makes a decision to have a go though and makes a half break. And the chance is still there and this time the Lions execute it perfectly and some interplay between the Toje and Daly sees them in behind the All Blacks tackle line and the Lions suddenly have some real momentum. We can now see the All Blacks defence is becoming disconnected and the Lions set up with two waves of attackers hoping to exploit that. They've not quite connected their outside backs though, so they run two more phases in field to try and link up, sucking in more defenders. On the 11th phase we can see that defence is really struggling to fill the field and there is space for the Lions to attack on the next phase possibly. But on the 12th phase we see the Lions rewind against the flow and it's unclear why they do this. But as they recycle, we can see they've now created a genuine chance to the right. Again, whilst they could have played in behind the lead attack, they suck in a few more All Black defenders and then go wide. They've now created a 3 versus 2, but here's where the problems start. Farrell makes a big mistake and tries to float the ball off his weak side, and Barrett plucks it out of the air and sets off for the line. We can see straight away the All Blacks move into their support formation, a perfect arrowhead. And even though Williams chases down Barrett, Lamappi is off and it's now a foot race to the line. Keep an eye on Watson here though, as he shows great awareness to shut off Surveyor's support line. He doesn't commit to catching Lamappi and trusts Davis to chase him down, which he does and Watson is there to intercept. Both teams' chances are now gone and the Lions work hard and clear the lines. I think the sequence shows how difficult both teams found it to finish at times. And as I said, that can be down to a number of things. Pressure and experience are probably the two main things. And with players like Surveyor missing opportunities he would normally have finished, it definitely lends itself towards that thinking. But with the series over, the All Blacks will now look to be tightening those things up. The Lions will go back to their respective unions and hopefully taking a lot of knowledge with them. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter.